I have worked on several laptops already where I did some sort of disassembly or sort of repair, upgrades, you name it. Though I am not in the same level as those who do it for a living. But at this point, as long as you're careful and you check the manual, RTFM, I should be fine and I wouldn't be breaking a laptop anytime soon. Tech fixing vlog or log. It's gonna be more of a log. But this video series is not exactly a comprehensive how to repair guide or some sort of you're gonna learn something here. The first one is going to be really odd and I hope some of you guys could actually explain what actually happened. And then the second one was supposed to be me just doing some cleaning and a mild repair and then ended up doing just a complete disassembly because there's a lot more things to fix. I mean, when I opened up the laptop, more fixing was needed. Enjoy! So hello, EJ Tech here and I just fixed the laptop. Though the repair on it is a bit, um, I would say sort of underwhelming since there's nothing actually wrong. All we did was completely disassemble it and then put it back together. That's it really, right? Yeah. That's really it. So, I mean, both of us wish that we did a video of the entire process of troubleshooting and then taking stuff bit by bit apart and then until it went to the complete disassembly and then now it's a working laptop. So, on to the actual video. Originally, it's not turning on, like at all, no power, no nothing. And then after complete disassembly, bit by bit, and it's not working. Waiting for it to boot up. It's still using an uh, just hard disk drive, so expect it to be very slow. And Steam decided to update. So what you did is really you just strip it down as in to zero, right? Yep. This is my old, this is my blockmate, Nico Fernandez. <laughs> just disassemble everything, put it back together. Whoop, it's working. So yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's it. It's not much to talk I wish, about. I wish I documented everything. I regret everything. Is now okay. But the other side, like keep an eye on that screw. That doesn't look right. So let's go to the next laptop, which is actually my laptop, my main system. The very system that I do all my web browsing, mu mainly my music playback, file management, video editing, 3D modeling, all of it. I am actually kind of surprised of how, how heavy, half a kilogram, a one fourth of a kilogram or something. Explain, like this is the heaviest laptop motherboard I have picked up. It's, uh, it's broken here, it's broken here, it's broken everywhere. But talk about bad design. The display cable of the laptop is squished in there. That's gonna break soon. I, I think I'm gonna have to put electrical tape on it as well. All right, Asus, when it comes to your budget laptops, well, Actually, it's kind of poor. Though honestly, all laptops in this price range, who am I kidding? All laptops in this price range are gonna be like this. <sighs> I'm fix the hinge and then everything else. Yay.
I take it back, there are some parts of the laptop that are crappily built, and there's the parts where I take for granted the keyboard is reinforced. So there's the keyboard itself. I thought this is the keyboard itself. It's not. It's just the reinforcing metal bar. This is metal. All laptops should have the keyboard of this Asus laptop. I'm, it's like no flex. Like, you'll be little flex. And this is why. It's... Here's what happened. I had to disassemble the laptop again because when I put it back together, turn it back on, the first thing I launched is IDA64, making sure I f***ed up nothing. And what I did is of course my usual CPU FPU system catch test. And in that, it was running the same as before. Basically there's no improvement whatsoever. But when I did the stress GPU, things didn't look right. Basically the C GPU core clock was going 1000, 1000 megahertz and then dropping down to 300 and then 1000 megahertz and then 300, 1000 megahertz and then 300, 1000 megahertz, 300. And it just keeps doing that. And then the CPU GPU temperature stayed consistently above 90 degrees and from my experience stress testing this laptop that GPU never hits 90 degrees seriously it never hit 90 degrees it never hit 96 so I knew something was wrong because the GPU core clock wasn't right the GPU core clock wasn't right so yeah I did a complete disassembly of this laptop again reseated the GPU added more thermal paste and then I kind of pushed down the heatsink and it did like sort of like a like I felt like well that settled differently than before and then finally I put it back together and it's not going beyond 90 degrees GPU core clock is steady at 661 just like before and yeah everything is working hunky dory and there you have it I still can't explain the first one Maybe something just got shaken loose because someone did borrow the laptop, it came back, it was broken. So how many of you guys guessed that it could just be a drop? I'm still not sure. It's still kind of baffling and it's been weeks since I did that repair. That laptop is still working. So far, Nico hasn't messaged me back that the laptop's broken. So, likers gonna like, haters gonna hate, subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, follow me on Twitter at TechieBengal, and thank you for watching!